So Dalton's law of partial pressures states that if you've got a mixture of gases, like air, that the total pressure will be a result of the, all the pressures added up. Okay, does that make sense? So in air, the total pressure of the air, be it like one atmosphere, for example, to make things nice and easy. Let's say the total pressure was one atmosphere. The first pressure is from nitrogen, and let's say that pressure is 0.78 atmospheres. The second pressure from oxygen would be 0 0.20 atmospheres. And the pressure from all the other gases would have to then be what? Zero point zero two. So the pressure from the other must be zero point zero two atmospheres. Everybody, does that make sense? Okay. So the pressure of all of the little gases adds up to the pressure of the total air. Now remember, pressure is about it hitting the sides of the container. Okay, so actually let's change this to percentages. 100% of the pressure. What percentage comes from nitrogen? 78%. So they're hitting the size of the container 100, 100 times per second, fine. 78 of those hits are from nitrogen, okay? And if I took out all the other gases and I just had nitrogen in there hitting, would my pressure be 100% anymore? No, it would just be 78%. So would my pressure be one atmosphere anymore? No, it would only be 0.78 atmospheres if I took out all the gases and I had just nitrogen hitting the sides. Get it? And what percentage is due to the oxygen? 20%. And the other gases, like argon and trace elements of other things, would then be 2%. Okay, so if it's about these little ping pong balls hitting the sides of the container and I take out 2% of the ping pong balls, I'll have less pressure hitting the sides. If all my ping pong balls are in there, 2% of them are blue, 20% are red, and 78% are green, I would have 100% of the pressure. 100 ping pong balls, one atmosphere. Does that make Does that get that? Okay. So, Right now, I just changed that one question about partial pressures into, from atmospheres into percentages. Is that okay? You can do the same thing with moles. Junior class change. I could have how many moles add up and that would give me my total, okay? But I can't do the same thing with masses or volume. I have to take the masses and volume and convert them into moles. And then I could plug my moles into here and go for my total. Okay? So it's the same basic concept, which is this, <clears throat> but each question looks a little bit different depending if they give you atmospheres or percentages or moles or mass I have to convert into moles. So students find this unit really daunting, or this unit, this subunit, really daunting because they think every question looks different and they never know what to do about it. You have to look at this as the same thing every time. I've just rephrased it. Instead of saying atmospheres, I've now said percentages. Instead of percentages, I said number of moles. How would we go from number of moles to percentages? Hmm. Hmm. Right. If 80% of it is nitrogen, then how many moles must I have out of 100 moles? 
Eight, oh, sorry, I meant 78, sorry. <laughs> if 78%, I'll use the same example. If 78% of it is nitrogen, I must have 78 out of 100 moles. Right? But what if I don't have 100 moles? So let me just write that down for a second. 78 moles of nitrogen out of 100 moles in the whole system. So how many ping pong balls would I have to throw in out of 100? 78 of them would have to be labeled with a little n. Everybody okay with that? Or actually n2, but anyway. Okay? But what if I didn't have 100 moles or 100 ping pongs? I had 50. Then what would this be then? The total would be 50, and I would have 78 divided by 2, right? Which is 30, 39. Does that make sense? So do you see how these two things are the same thing? I've just changed it from a percentage to a fraction now. Because fractions and percentages are the same thing. Are you okay with that? And if I'm not given moles, but I've given mass, I'll have to take those masses and convert them into moles to then find my percentage to then make sure they all add up to a total. And I'm already getting some, oh my gosh, looks on their faces. Okay? You've, you've got to think of this as the same thing every time. Every time I'm converting it into this. And every time I'm, I'm going to need to get kind of a percentage out of it. Okay? So, for example, there's a sample problem on your book. And it says, a mixture of gas is a container at 840 Hg, so that must be the total Hg. Everybody okay with that? Was found to contain 18% of O2, 76% of N2, 12% of NO, and 14% of CO2. What is the partial pressure, that's the P1, P2, P3, and P4, of the each gas? So, if oxygen occupies 18% of the total hitting of the size of the container. Okay, so 18% of them have to do with oxygen. And the total pressure on that container is 840 millimeters of mercury. Then 152.2 millimeters of mercury. That's how much pressure must be from the oxygen. So what's this saying? This is saying the container has 840 millimeters of mercury of pressure. If I took everything out and just left my oxygen, it would then only have a pressure of 151. Because the oxygen ping pong balls are only 18% of the total pressure of ping pong balls. Does that make sense? And then they've done the calculation for each one of those. And by the time you've done all of them, so the nitrogen then, is 56% or 0.56 times 840 millimeters of mercury and for 740, that, that number there, is the pressure that has to do with the nitrogen. And then they did it for the nitrogen monoxide and they did it for the carbon dioxide and they got 100.8 and they've got 117.6 and shouldn't all of these partial pressures add up to my total pressure. So that would be my final check, is I would go that plus that plus that plus that in my calculator, better be 840, which is that total percentage. Does that, do you get it? Okay. And then they've got a conversion to kilopascals there, but you don't need to worry about that. Okay. Question number two, a little bit. Harder. A sample of gas at STP was known to contain 69.0 grams of O2 and 48.0 grams of CO2. What was the partial pressure of each gas? Okay, so the first thing I have to do I'm aiming for percentages here. I've got mass. 
I'm going to have to find go from mass to moles to moles divided by total moles to eventually get my percentage. That's where I'm headed. Okay. So how do I convert moles into O2? N is equal to little m over big M, which is 69.0 grams over O2, right? So 16 times 2. Trust me, there'll be three people in this classroom that forget to do that. O2 is 32.00, 16 times two of them. Okay? You divide those two numbers and you get 2.16 moles. The number of moles of CO2, same thing, little m over big M, 48.0 over 44.01, and you get 1.09 moles. And so therefore the total moles must be 3.25 moles total. So what percentage must this be then? Well, 2.16 divided by 3.25 is times 100 if you like. Oh, I haven't done it. I've done it in two steps there. So 2.16 divided by 3.25 is 66. 0.5%. And on this one, 1.09 1 divided by 3.25 is 33.5%. It better be 100%, yes, in total? I would hope. Everybody know that? And then I'm back to the bottom of that first, this first stage here where I've got my percentages up to the total. So I would then take my number of, what does it ask for? The partial, oh, it only asks for the partial pressures. Okay, so if the percentage is 66.5%, so for O2, 66.5, 66.5% times, what's the total pressure of this system? It's at STP, right? So they went and looked up the value of the pressure at STP which is 101.3 kilopascals. They multiply those two things together and they get 67.3 kilopascals. That has to do with oxygen. Are you with me? Girls? And then the next one, carbon dioxide, must have been the 33.5%. Times 101.3 kilopascals, and that is 34.0 kilopascals. So, how much of that pressure has to do with the oxygen? 67.3 kilopascals of it. So, if I took out the carbon dioxide, I'd only have a pressure of 67 there. Okay, but together they have a pressure of 101.3. Why 101.3? Because it's at STP. So, you got to look up the pressure at STP. Does that make sense? Sort of. Okay. There's four questions on the next worksheet to help you with that. And then the last question, you've got to read this gas collection paragraph to help you with, but I think that's enough information right now. So you're going to go and do numbers one to four on your own, dealing with this, just these, these concepts here that we've just been covering.